Hello, Gavin. Ah, damn it. I wish I was quicker. H Hello, Dennis. Hello, Nicole. Oh, I'll just leave it. I I understood. Well, this like a, a, we're coming together. So there might be people who don't know what's happening right now. We started this podcast in October 2022. We, we did this one daily when Elon Musk uh, took daily uh, took took Twitter and in three months it might be over. Now it's May 2024. Dennis is gone because he has a real job now. He's 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 chef of audio at uh, Eins Live, a German radio station, and Nicole is a regular guest, and she's working for ZDF. You might know them from train stations and digital in a digital form. And I'm really happy you're here and I'm really happy that you all are here and you're listening to this one. I have a bit of housekeeping to do right now. Last year on Republica, we tried to do some kind of game show. We did that and we succeeded. And then we said, okay, after having a game show on Elon Musk, we don't have anything to do here. As you can see, we're back. But we still said, okay, we make a small live podcast, nothing big, and we see what's happening. And then the program was there, and we realized we're on stage two. And the mode today, all three of us have topics, and we'll talk about as, m as many as possible. But if, if you guys in the audience say, OK, all this bullshit, uh, you can tell us. And, and we are checking what you have to say. OK, right. Yeah. OK. OK. So the first thesis we have is social media brings us, brings us back mass media. Oh, this is, this is mine. We talked about this thesis in the beginning, but uh, we haven't read them. I know yours, and this is deeply connected to one you will bring up next. The, is, is it is it allowed to, 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 to spoiler, OK, the, the role of likes, likes come back um, with platforms like TikTok? We experience that the mechanics we know from the early years of social media like anyone can post stuff for anyone. It's not like the big ones. Everything is a little more de democratized. People discuss stuff, like in the last days of Republica, that this development uh, of early times of social media is gone and over. If I like, if I comment, I don't really have an exchange on the big platforms. It's basically powered by TikTok, but we can see it on other platforms as well. Um, there's a suggestion like the, what the platform should show me. And now we come back to, to some sender and, uh, and receiver model. This is my thesis. Just take it out. Take it out. Do you, do you think that's good? Is it good or bad? As a person in media, I think it's good. And as a user? I don't know if I think it's good or bad, but what we what we thought social media would be, it's it's on the stuff is happening on different platforms, and the the the, the standard idea we used to have is is, is is taken by the Fediverse, but everything else is gone, and for a democratized usage of the platforms, it's a, it's bad news basically. I have a strange question on this. Is it really a new trend or is it basically happening for a lot of years that we realize, for example, if I explain my father what Instagram is, then his, his, his first association is people are taking pictures of their food. And the idea of taking pictures of food is really uh, old. But Markus Söder is still doing it, but no one else. But the question is, don't people take pictures of their food because they know what good creators are, or are they just so, so, so 
uh, intimidated by the content, I don't have anything to say. Both plays a role. We saw that on Facebook for quite a while, that the number of postings and stuff that people say in a private way is, 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 uh, has decreased. And the people, well, if uh, the, the more uh, optical professional this thing is, uh, they just they don't feel like getting into it. But that's not right because only their friends saw that. But it's changing with the virality of platforms like TikTok. Um, it's not it's not for only for my followers, but there's also something could be could 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 get viral and uh, I can I can only switch it off if I have like uh, the stuff only for my followers and it's more difficult as a single user to get through through this wall of algorithms and we have some kind of mass medium that's my thesis what do you feel Nicole can't it just I think we are we humans can learn can't that be like a positive thing for users? Like we have this idea of having dopamine all the time. We have to say goodbye to that. And actually like figuring out we're not all professional creators that we just think, okay, let's, let's go back to the simple things and posting things just because it's fun. You know this talk show phenomenon, uh, Corona was really great when it came to that. There were talk show guests um, and politicians stopped stopped trying to, to get a certain thing, so you have to clap when um, the audience wasn't in the studio anymore. That stopped and people just talked like they would in, in their private life and that were taken up to social media, I don't think, three times. How to how to crack the 100,000 likes mark, but I just do what I feel like doing, and the re-authentication from of social media could happen. Yeah, and that started with Instagram, where people just had two accounts, one f f f fake Insta and real Insta. I think real Insta was closed for just for closed uh, closed amount of people and that was in a time when the landscape of social networks wasn't that big as today it was some kind of thing like yeah you, you think you have to do it it was the end of all filters basically does anyone have a second Instagram account just for private use wow okay so I think that's that proves my, my idea I don't have that, not yet, but maybe from now on, maybe I just I just put a lock on my account. Instagram tried a feature like Flipside that could could happen like you have a s tiny private profile in your official profile and it's really it, it didn't didn't take up. But um, my next thesis, well, there's someone raising the hand. I have emotions, strong emotions. <laughs> But also to to Rinster and Fenster. But um. yes, uh. Uh, that's yours, Nicole. Yeah, you you can tell by how differentiated and refined it is. Proper use of punctuation. Yeah, but she broke the deadline. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, yeah, I saw your thesis first, and then, you know, I felt pressure. Yeah, we're so modest, right? It's called flip side, actually. Yeah, and oh, yeah, okay. I'm the one with the emotions. So, yeah, uh, the, the, the line shifted. Um, I remember the first days on threads and if you listen to our podcast regularly you know I'm not a fan of threads but that doesn't matter right now so I had to hear feedback from so many people read posts from so many people that I continue posting on Twitter and I'm gonna keep on calling it Twitter 
I received so much so much criticism for that. And the moral question that was posed, which I question, you know, I posed that question as well. But Elon Musk, you know, he's a giant catastrophe. But that doesn't turn Zuckerberg into a saint. And what you can tell by that is that the discourse has shifted. As soon as someone like Elon Musk appears on the stage and uh, takes rain, then uh, Zuckerberg suddenly we see him in this different light. But he as well like brought devastation to humanity due to his platforms, Facebook and Instagram. But now we see him in this different light. and just because of Elon Musk. And now it's your turn. Uh, you were a contrarian when it came to this thesis, right? Now you're spoiling my future thesis, right? What are you doing? Yeah, well, you know, sort of this howlier than thou argument. So I feel like if you if we're going to do a ranking, right, who's the what's the worst right now? I think then we can all agree on that, right? Yeah, but if you say this Facebook meta, you know, to the public, they, they seem like a it seems like a really good product. It doesn't mean that I'm worshiping Mark Zuckerberg, right? But don't you think there's this dichotomy that a lot of people have going on right now? Yeah, uh, you're asking me, but Gavin <laughs> is going to answer. Yeah, so. Uh, well, basically one and the same person, right? So I, I, I kind of agree with you, right? Um, but on the other hand, uh, yeah, uh, it's like uh, choosing your own uh, slaughter. And, you know, when you when you think about posting stuff on the internet so that a lot of people see it simultaneously, then I have to think about where do I do that? And then at some point, you end up on threads, Instagram, Facebook. You end up on a Zuckerberg platform. And because Twitter isn't an alternative anymore, yeah, someone just you know sat on that and pushed it down, and so it's not an alternative anymore. That's too inconsequential for me. Um, but yeah, in all seriousness, X, of course, from an idealistic point of view. You shouldn't use it anymore. I still do. And because I'm a Berlin correspondent of the German public broadcasting ZDF, and I focus heavily on the right wing AFD. And so that's all of my work for the past few weeks. And X is where all of the AFD audience is. And so for me, I think that the the, the, pub, the news that's been published about Maximilian Kra last week, and uh, I, maybe you haven't heard the newest news today. Um, the, the, well, but, but yeah. So I feel like with all of that content. I really thought about this a lot. I need to keep using X because that way I'm able to reach the people who are like on the fence about this, right? And also I get to annoy the people who are on their side. And so this argument that you must not use X, I think is too simplistic. Yeah, for me, I think it's, you know, a difference between do we use, a, use it to do research or do we use it as a tool for publication, right? You, um, your argument is your target audience. Um, but for me, from a journalistic point of view, um, we also had this discussion yesterday. There's a relevant part of the discourse that's still going on on X. And so it's not something uh, journalists can just refute and not use anymore in uh, multiple areas. Um, yeah, but the, the, the line has shifted uh, of what we are able to bear. All right, next one. The like is dead. And 
I wasn't sure what article uh, to use in German, um, but I'm going to uh, use, uh, call it das like. Um, so this is a feeling I have, and I want to make an argument for it. Uh, I feel like like doesn't mean, hey, you, uh, the creator, I like what you did. I enjoy the content that you posted. But it's become the strategic tool to train your own For You page, to train your own algorithm, right? And I noticed this especially when using um, music streaming apps. When songs are suggested to me, and even if I don't enjoy them, I keep listening to them all the way through because I'm afraid that the app is not going to recommend them to me in the future anymore and I'm never going to listen to them again. Um, yeah. It's a thinker, right? All right, I got a question. Do you think the majority of users does that consciously? Or, well, it depends on the platform. So YouTube, yeah. I think on YouTube, it's very clear that if you click like, a thumbs up, then you get more videos like that. On Facebook, I'm not sure if people know that. On TikTok, people know that definitely. If you like something, you will receive similar videos by the algorithm. And so on YouTube, you know, I there's no suggestions at all in the beginning, and I'm gonna, you know, have to start watching videos, and then it learns what I like. And so I, I have like uh, hundreds of uh, subscriptions on YouTube, but I see none of their content anymore. And so, yeah, I think it's uh, it's interesting this uh, this marker, right? Does anyone know what that is in English? Uh, is it also called like? Like? Yeah, why is there a difference in German and not in English? We don't know. Anyway, we are, we're going to uh, cover that in the next episode. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's why I wanted to take you. So, that's a real bubble that you're creating with that. Is it the end of interaction? Well, it's kind of lopsided. I need to think about it, but... Uh, if, if to uh, frame it a little differently, your intention is not to s signal something, but to build something for yourself. And uh, well, it's an, it's an extreme bubble. Yeah, m maybe that could be happening. Yeah, but you could use it strategically. Um, if you if I like stuff, I don't actually want to like well it's not really intuitive really what does it do with your comment i mean is it's like a signal to the algorithm and a comment is a is a signal to the to the maker yeah actually that it is yeah i could imagine that well i thought it might raise more concern but as a society, we haven't learned to to live uh, to, to work with social media as a tool in our hands. Well, there were four four commenter in your earlier sentence. Well, this is from me. Uh, thanks for this great commenter. Well, in the podcast, I said, and I talked about an interview that some social media guy, I didn't don't even know the topic, uh, and he made this with Reuters, and Gavin asked me, did, did, he, did, did he regret it? That was just a punny thing. Um, and two minutes later, everything was over. As a society, we haven't learned to live with social media. Well, this is the discourse we are having, how we're using social media, I think. Stefan Mao had a session and his thesis was like that society isn't really split up really so even when it comes to political th stuff he cartographed it and uh, he mapped it and uh, nevertheless social media lets us feel discourses in a harder way and like we're talking to each other and it's based on this 
the way we are um, interacting with each other on social media, um, that does something to the people. Everything I read there, and uh, we all have some kind of big accounts, and we're confronted with postings that get hard comments. Yeah, really, really just only a few times. And it's really big feedback. And sometimes you get a different view on it, and you're starting to to, 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 to get a little harder, and you have to filter it. May I ask a question? Yeah, later. But there's, I, I have to finish the sentence. Um, I think we're not handling that already. Like if we if we pretend to to have knowledge on this, and we're talking a lot about function, and we think, okay, if this function is coming, this feature is coming, uh, your boss uh, presented the partnership with uh, institutions from other other countries, and Eli Pariser was showing a new kind of form of social medium, maybe that might be a contestant for Twitter. Um, but there was a lot of focus on function and features. Um, I don't know if we have can, can solve societal problems with features, um, which, which we also fire up with it. So um, this is behind this thesis. I have two questions to you. Um, I have a feeling and a question. Well, do you do you also think that I'm 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 going a little more back into the history. You you made a post on X that you're leaving the platform. You got over 1000 comments on this and it was instrumentalized. It was clearly uh People in from Telegram chats that spread your your tweet your, your tweet and how you handled this is, was really remarkable because it was kind of sorted um, and I was talking about this with you in the podcast and it, it moved you and and you were like no I can handle that and my question is do you also mean with it that society has to understand the tool that there should be some a clear disconnection from emotions and the text I'm reading there. So should I, shouldn't I t take things more seriously there? What you're explaining is what filtering is for me. Yeah, I think you have to learn that, but in a different way, depending on how big your account is. And the smaller your account is, the, you can in, 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 a, in a legal way, uh, an account can be open or closed and can be more open and more private. But this, this gray area in between the private, uh, the private public, whatever you call it, I think the more an account has a private mood to it, the less it should happen for people to filter stuff and and it's a societal issue we all have it in our hands in those moments where you have well situations where it could could it just happen that you have to handle it and and how we and how we talk to people it's really interesting huh? <laughs> um I, I come back to you, but I still have one thought because before I lose it, is it is it really in the hands of the people using it? There's a lot of instances on the way that should that that sh sh should lead people to learn this. Isn't it really just a job of regulation of whatever? It would be a, too easy. It's only society. No, no, no. The networks are in charge or the companies and also politics to have some kind of regulation there. Maybe that's a thesis as well, regulation, yeah. Yeah, of course. This this is just a focus on society. I'm having 
different idea to this from a perspective of a person that gets a lot of comments. You're right, Dennis. You're getting you, you're not letting it through to, to you. Um, I had people writing on my tweets, you're not discussing with the people. And I really felt seen. And no, I'm not doing that anymore. What I'm actually doing is I look at all this and I switch switch off the conversation because I don't want it anymore. I don't really feel like I, I, I'm blocking people as soon as they call me Nick, Nickychen or Nicky Line. I, I'm not, I don't want to feel small as a woman. I'm not posting any private stuff. So people think they know me, but no one actually knows and what kind of family situation I'm living in. No one, no one knows what I'm voting for. And, but, ooh, you get, um, no matter what I'm posting, there's at some point some special expert is asking me how many kids I have, as if ev everything gets taken to a private area, uh, private basis, and that I'm I'm saying this openly. I'm calling it a, a chance to get in touch with people. I was sitting on the ZDF stage and I was talking about public. Uh, public broadcasting and for us as public broadcasters um, that are getting the kind of defense situation social media would have been the chance to get closer to the people no one f feels like reading comments anymore this closeness uh, given by technical means no one is using them because no one has the time and no one has such a thick fur that you can't really see what 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 kind of constructive stuff goes on there, and that's a serious problem because people don't feel like taking care of letters to the editor. Um, that community management is 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 a little difficult, and you can just put students there. Just to, you can just sort that to the side, and hopefully there's nothing nothing legal happening here. And if you accept the comment feature, you have to handle it. I'm, I would agree. There's, uh, th there's news outlets that handle this different, but there's some people say they don't discuss with me, but they are just saying I'm right. I'm not discussing anymore, and there's actually people that I'm. I, I start. I, I started off by discussing. Some people want to discuss. It's not lo just like destructive people that are around, but the constructive people who have a question. The people who want to get into an exchange that are differentiated. Um, it's I'm I'm not I'm not of your opinion, but I don't see them anymore. Oh, where's Gavin? The, the off Speaking of not seeing someone anymore. Yeah, someone from the audience. I'm Moritz. Hello. Um, yeah, so you wanted uh, us to question your thesis, right? And so, yeah, I felt called upon because, you know, this metaphor of the tool that we carry around in our hand means that, you know, as a society, we're the subject, we're active, we're doing something. Um, so maybe you're a handyman, uh, you're, you're using a hammer to hit a nail, you're using a something to cut wood but I don't think you know uh, <laughs> with a with a handyman with a tool with a nail with a piece of wood and so it's really like you know someone using a platform to make us adaptable make us marketable for the ad industry and so yeah I, I don't share that positive vision that you shared Yeah, so that's basically, you know, this, you're not the customer, you're the product, right? Um, and I think it's about what perspective do you take? Um, so you might say we need regulatory measures, right? And yeah, I would agree that we didn't 
have the uh, regulatory measures that we should have had. Bernhard Perksen years ago um, coined a, a, a term of a platform council um, years ago, and then Facebook uh, at some point instituted this meta oversight board. Yeah, but they, they've also they've made some changes, so it's not that useless. Yeah, sure, but it still seems like they're trying to cover up something, right? And it feels like politics and governments have not taken the measures necessary. And so, yeah, the, the way we are using platforms nowadays and are interacting with each other nowadays on platforms, I don't think there's a, yeah, a lot of influence from regulatory measures there. All right, uh, one more person from the audience. Hi. So you said uh, as a tool in our hand, but a, a tool for what? Like to what end? What, what's your idea of what are we going to achieve by using that tool? I don't know. Maybe Gavin has some idea. <laughs> so you just make a thesis, but don't think them through. Yeah, but it's about what I want to achieve in a specific moment in time, right? So. Yeah, the, you know, I also like wrote this shortly before the deadline at uh, 11 o'clock. Um, so it just depends on what's the concrete debate, the, the point you're trying to make. So I feel like that's a pattern that we see at multiple points. What, 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 and what exactly do we mean by tool? Yeah, I think that's a great concept uh, to think of this as a tool, because it a tool is something you use to achieve an end. And so if we stick with the uh, example of the hammer, then uh, yeah, maybe I have an, an image, a photograph, and maybe the wall that I'm hitting the nail in, that's my private public sphere, my personal public sphere. Um, but yeah, but then if I want to clean the window, then you know a hammer doesn't help me at all. And I think that's that might be the problem that we as a society don't know what tool to use uh, for our goals. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna do a new podcast about tools, right? And you think we really don't know that as a society? Yeah, I think we don't. So just like imagine, you know, we have three different networks. And then I think a lot of people will, you know, just post everything onto one single network. And, you know, people just use TikTok to post everything because that's the network all of their friends use. And it might not be, you know, uh, a smart idea to upload Tinder pictures there. Yeah, but maybe, you know, it's even worse than using your WhatsApp status. Yeah, that's uh, a bold claim. I know, I know, but um, yeah, I want to, you know, I want to evoke a scandal today, provoke a scandal. Um, all right, next one. The end of Twitter motivated the other social networks to also like uh, totally screw up their business model. So yeah, um, we started this podcast one and a half years ago, and we we named it Haken Dran, uh, referencing the blue check mark, um, because uh, we you know we wanted to reference this uh, totally stupid idea to make every user able to buy a blue check mark, but then Meta introduced Meta Verified at some point, and so did you see the movie Cube? You're you're like uh, stuck within lots and lots of cubes, and someone always has to go first. And to me, it feels like Elon Musk is that person. The others let him go first and see what happens, and then they follow them. And uh, yeah, and I feel like that's not very smart of all the actors involved. So the the, the blue check mark is just a singular example, um, you know. But in Meta, it also like. There you can also have like more influence. You can increase your reach, and so can you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, but like uh, totally like crashing your business model. That's like 
Yeah, because they're like the, the verification, right, that, that checkmark was representing earlier, that um, that totally goes down the train. Yeah, I, I, no one told me that, you know, we should make these bold claims. I wanted to make regular claims. All right, so uh, th there were a few points, and I think this verification aspect was something that we discussed a lot on our podcast. But isn't that just like market-based economy? Like you look at what happens, and then Elon Musk, Elon Musk starts implementing this new idea, and there's like no outcry on Twitter. Then maybe they see, oh, that idea worked, and then they use their own ideas that maybe they had lying around somewhere on their backlog. Yeah, and uh, so for example, Twitter, right? They they didn't use um, clicks anymore for um, a video, but they used impressions, and a, a, a value that doesn't tell us anything about like how many people watched your video. Uh, so, for example, if I watch your video 40 times, but I like it once, then you have an interaction rate of 100%, but you don't know about that at all. Yeah, it's just like um, a survey by a major German political party on the end of the uh, gasoline car, right? Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a value that doesn't represent interactions. It, it doesn't represent anything. It doesn't have any meaning. Yeah, but still, like crashing the business model. Um, that's like, I'm sorry, I wrote it at 10:30. Yeah, 10:25. All right. I would frame this more positively, like because Elon Musk. Yeah, I'm just a positive person. Because Elon Musk does so much stupid stuff. Mark Zuckerberg, you know, might feel like, oh, I can also, you know, be a little silly, right? Um, and th th he might feel called on to experiment more, and he just knows he's not going to screw up as badly as Elon. Yeah, in, in reality, this Meta Verified program, I think if Elon Musk hadn't done all of that stuff with the blue check mark on Twitter, we would have discussed this Meta thing in a very different way. And so... You know, the, 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 on Facebook, all the old blue checkmark accounts can keep their checkmark, and so it's much less of a scandal, right? Mark Zuckerberg is being... Uh, Worshipped. Huh? Worshipped. Worshipped. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's no hate, Nicole. Who had this thesis? This is from N. Dickmann. So, Michael, uh, this is this has been has been discussed already. Okay, next one. Social media use is is is, is a strong distinction instrument. I'm not at, on X. Is the new we don't have a TV. Do you hear this applause for my thesis? And there's a dash between that. There should be a dash between social and media. It's something we're fighting all over. It's that's a base I don't want to talk about. Yeah. Do do you want to tell us more about it? I think it's self-explanatory. And I have three theses uh, that were really important for me. I'd have an inherent logic to it. Um, since X. It's the slum of the slums when it comes to social media networks and platforms. Whatever. Uh, of course, it's a statement when you st start from the beginning. If I'm still by still in on X or not, this is what it depends on. This quote. Um, it's also. That's why I think the thesis that we as a society don't own the tools, um, I think it's right. But in some parts, I would restrict this idea. Of course, on Mastodon, you can post the same stuff as on Blue Sky and on Threads. And what did I miss? No, that's enough. Yeah. And maybe Insta. OK. Just take the text-based versions. OK. This is a bit stupid. 
uh, I'm not doing threats because I think it's so stupid. I think when you're strong on Instagram, you're not strong on threats. I see so many people, and I say this as a person who's not so strong on Instagram because it's not my my medium. Um, I, I say this on <laughs> as a TV person. Oh my god, I'm talking shit here. Well, um, <laughs> I know, you know what I mean. If I really have good, if I can make good content on Instagram, that's that's what doesn't mean I'm 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 strong with words on threads. As soon as I try to use the same mechanisms uh, to, to 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 get buzz on threads like I did on Instagram, this is going to fail because I think threads is, isn't is stupid and I don't want to be there. Because I don't want to, yeah, stand for this, to say it like that. And of course, I'm posting different content on Mastodon than on Blue Sky. If I have nerdier questions, for example, I go to Mastodon. Um, that's why social media. If you just put X to the side, this is an extreme case. But since we can differentiate, it's a question of. What type are you? Are you more the Mastodon type or are you more the Blue Sky type? But I think it's not bad. And I would agree that in the moment when X broke, that the disting distinction kicked a lot, like we young people say, because you can actually make new decisions. I always thought algorithms are stupid, yeah. Um, this is used to be something with the Elon Musk thing on Twitter that had a moral part to it. It was also coined by this and everything that came later. It's just a follow up on this of this fragmentation on the social media market. I'm I'm with you there, yeah. Well for nine euro ninety nine. Any ideas in the room maybe? Do we have to do we have to, to 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 tell a joke? No, I'm really bad at this. I always I always lose them. Uh, I'm Chris, Christiana and I'm living in Great Britain and I think it's a really great thesis because uh, what's actually what you forgot I'm actually I'm not I'm not on X not anymore. This is a privilege. Because when I think about what we're doing on in, in Great Britain when it comes to rights of barrier-free transport, public transport, we we can reach uh, reach the, the the people of the state. No one of my friends is discussing if we should leave X. It's a pretty German discussion, I have to say. And another ex aspect is. Um, the whole thing with threats is a really German thing. I think you have a little bit of fear of missing out because you came so light with this. It's not that um, that hyped in Great Britain and not everyone loved it. My bubble is still on X and no one likes Elon, Elon Musk, but we are still living in the hope that times might change. and. He's losing interest in the platform, but I wanted to say that minorities, for minorities, X is still an important thing to, 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 to be listened to and to reach people who are in charge. Well, we don't have a TV, and that's actually the argument here. Yeah. It's a really good point here. If you mean with FOMO that I, I, I opened a British... Uh, British iTunes account, yeah, you're right, just just to download threads. I still had my US account. Uh, you were able to do that on with, with uh, vouchers. You were able to buy on eBay. No, that, 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 that was, uh, that, that didn't break the rules. No, it's still the regulation that sucks. Who wrote this? Because it said kicked, I say sucked. 
it's a thesis that's that's on my hard drive for 14 years, and we already talked about that. Um, what's the problem here? I th get the feeling that the solutions are in the room for a long time. Uh, the most present topic is the idea of the platform uh, platform group. Um, yeah, the, something might be happening, but in central topics we have on social media, we're debating at. Um, it's not it's not helpful and it's not not working. Uh, it's in the nature of things that regulation comes a lot later, that uh, legislation is happening later. We already talked about this Neuland thing where the internet is new for us thing, what Angela Merkel did. She was right. When it comes to that, yeah, when it comes to leg legislation and everything behind it, in that time it was a really new development, but now I get the feeling that we haven't gone further and if you have legislation we're talking about like it's like updates so you you can keep track of developments and I can't see anything of this and it's a problem it's too easy if it comes to the question of perspective just to push it to to the to the people providing the platforms and a principles work for platforms but you have to ask yourself the question do we want to have them as a role of a classical company um, if they have such an such an important part of our communication and information infrastructure with them right those were three plastic bottles I have got a feeling that, especially in the last few months, the uh, Digital Services Act in the EU and uh, the initiative of Thierry Breton uh, on the EU level, there's a lot of stuff happening there right now, but how far does that reach? So uh, we have these cases brought against uh, Meta and TikTok. Uh, which is still pending. We don't know how they will be decided, um, but they could end in a way that, you know, access to these platforms is um, limited, restricted. And that's a thesis, you know, it's, I would use a pencil to write that down, a sharp pencil. Yeah, Nicole, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with Dennis. I'm very pessimistic about this, uh, judging by our previous experiences in the last few years. I don't know what should, you know, make me feel optimistic about, like, being uh, in front of the wave, being in control, or, like, not even that, but just, like, keeping up with current developments. Like uh, this uh, Neuland quote by former Chancellor Angela Merkel, it's later than 2005, right? Um, yeah, and so uh, the, the survey that's uh, going around um, the German political sphere uh, the last few days, and Carsten Linnemann, general secretary of the CDU, said, oh, the survey has been manipulated in such a criminal fashion. Um, uh, it's, it's, they're, 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 they're so... Uh, they're almost about to call us a criminal clan, I think. Um, so, surveys are made that way that you have to click them to see the results. And so me, as a journalist, I was forced to uh, cast a vote three times just in order to see the results. Okay, that quote is from 2013. Someone just shouted it out. Yeah, that's going to be uh, the quote at the end of the day. Uh, Neuland isn't over just yet. Nicole Diekmann. Neuland meaning new land, uh, new territory. So, yeah, you're blaming uh, the government, right? But I feel like the government is basically functioning properly. There's lots of examples why we have a civilization, why we're doing so well because we have a regulation that's working. And I'm very optimistic, thusly. And so one example, not digitization, but like with a technical, you know, uh, 
background. So um, displays, refrigerators, they regulate in a way to not use too much electricity. If they do, then they're forbidden and aren't allowed on the market. And so that's very good because if we if we didn't have this sort of regulation, then uh, we would need to produce more energy. And so I think in the digital space, we're learning how regulation works at the moment. And I think this, you know, we're still in the early stages. And so yeah, Neuland, it's still a thing and it's funny, but really we're trying stuff out and we should give these people working for regulation on the EU level all the support we can give. But don't you think that's also about prioritization? Like an, a refrigerator isn't able to do as much damage to democracy as um, social media. One more quote to take away from this uh, tonight's event. A uh, refrigerator isn't that uh, harmful to democracy. Yeah, I would never uh, vote for um, emissions from refrigerators that damage the ozone layer. Yeah, so, you know, how can we, yeah, to make this transfer on uh, to the regulation of platforms? At some point, there's only going to be bots talking to other bots. Yeah, it's um, a little simplistic, but you know, if I start, um, if I want to congratulate someone uh, on their birthday in the U in the U.S., then Facebook will ask me, uh, "Do you want an AI to write the message for you?" Yeah, well, I I like, you know, manually. My my heart comes from the heart. Yeah, so I'm going to be a country singer singing about social media. Yeah, I don't think the stage will uh, be, uh, yeah, we don't have enough microphones to do karaoke right now. Yeah, so anyway, like they, 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 they propose to have an AI write what you want to write. And I think, you know, that's, that's a hype right now. And there's these, a lot of accounts of like, you know, uh, well, we're not sure if there's really a proper real person behind them. And so using generative AI to create all of this content, and this is, you know, imagined authenticity. But I think at some point, you know, it's, yeah, bots talking to bots. And yeah, and I also think we're not going to have like digital ghost towns anymore because when the real people leave, the bots will still be there and keep it going and keep it active, right? So Neuland is made out of ghost towns. It's uh, very dystopian. Why are you so negative, Kevin? I'm not negative. I just don't want someone to congratulate me on my birthday with... Yeah, so every year someone Someone writes to me, HBD. I, I, I didn't do that. And I really like it. The, the time you're saving by abbreviating that message, like you don't even have to spend those two seconds anymore. Just click the little magic wand and then bam, you're done. All right, uh, that, that, that's that. Finished. Oh, I, I want to add to that. Using a bot is also like a form of engagement, right? It's it's also a form of properly congratulating someone. So you 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 actually move your hand, you move the mouse pointer, right? We're all in search of love, after all. And maybe you know it was a proper, it, a really nice motion of the hand. All right, one more person from the audience. Yeah, so we. Are you going to reveal the secret of the secret WhatsApp group now? There's a WhatsApp group uh, where everyone uh, partaking in the Hack and Run podcast is a member of, except for Gavin. Any other questions from the audience? Emotions from the audience. Anyone having any emotions? Ooh, Nora is raising her hand.
All right, uh, one more question from me. There's a different form of regulation, right? The platform itself, like a platform, you know, restrict political commentaries. And so that's also a form of regulation, right? And of course, I know a lot of people who never like look at all the settings that a platform offers them. And also me as a power user, I, I still often have to search for these settings because they keep shifting. Well, I don't think that's regulation at all. I think that's a, a way, a measure of uh, preventing regulation because, you know, the, the, the way they phrase that, right? It's like Meta says that, that, you know, these political uh, content is not something. So, for example, Threads recommends political content on their homepage. Instagram doesn't do that. And that phrasing, what's political and what isn't, that's really interesting. Stuff that relates to a s small or large group or the whole of society is political. And by that logic, everything is political. And so I feel like it's not meant as regulation. It's a way of yeah fleeing regulation um, before it can uh, yeah, so one thing I did earlier uh, was a report for the uh, WDR channel. How do you actually properly set your privacy settings on various platforms? Uh, privacy checklist, basically. And we had to actually update this article every other month because these settings kept changing. And so it's a pseudo form of control, right? A pseudo form of transparency. It's really just like um, people, pro the platforms preventing you from actually reaching the goals you want to reach. Man, he's really closing his, uh, the rings on his watch today. So many steps off of the stage and into the audience. All right, snackable, please. Mastodon. Dot dot dot. Can you can you fill in the planks? I would like Mastodon if it were to become more relevant. If the Fediverse would become more relevant in total, uh, I think there's a lot of like structural hindrances to its success. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, a, it's, it's what we think of when we think of good social media, but it's still lacking relevance. All right, so a bold take. Uh, Mastodon has become really, really interesting as soon as Threats totally joins the Fediverse because then, you know, you uh, you don't have to think about how it actually works, but then there's really, you know, going to be stuff going on on the Internet, something we've been waiting for years for. I don't have a thesis on Mastodon. Um, I'm, I'm not spending much time there, so I'm, I'm not up to date on the, the state, and so I cannot do, you know, make any uh, predictions about that. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you two for being here, and uh, yeah, have a nice evening. Bye.